to Decisive Operations. In this episode of Battle Drills, we're going to talk about Bolt Action. I know Bolt Action is a very popular game. However, I started playing Chain of Command first, and I noticed when I wanted to play Bolt Action, there wasn't a lot of intro videos. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there, but there's not a lot of intro videos for Bolt Action. So I'm going to go over orders, and I'm going to do three rounds of sample gameplay, because uh, that's how I best consume information. Uh, so it's very demo style, very canned. Hopefully it gives you uh, the understanding of the basics. Uh, for people out there who don't know what bolt action is, uh, looking at you, Chad, hopefully you're watching, this video is for you. Uh, if you're not, Chad, and you're watching, this video is also for you too. Um, but this black screen behind me, this is definitely for you, Nate. So I hope you guys enjoy, and thanks for watching. Bolt action is a World War II combat game centered around a platoon, but it's really, if you look at the MTO of uh, units at that time, it's really a platoon with company and sometimes battalion or brigade level assets put down at the platoon level. Uh, but it's centered, the core of bolt action is around infantry, and the core mechanics of bolt action is on the order dice. So orders dice are generated by each unit entry. So as you see here, you have a French MMG team producing one orders dice. You have a French Forces of the Interior producing an orders dice. And then you have the two German units to your left, both producing an orders dice. So what you're going to do is you and your opponent are going to take all the order dice you produce. You can either count this up or Easy Army or apps like that generally tell you the amount of order dice you have. You put it in a bag, shake the bag up, and the game, the game begins with the first pull of the order dice. So in this demonstration, the first pull of the order dice is going to be a gray dice which belongs to the German. The German player can then assign that dice to any eligible unit. So if they were going to assign orders, they have a list of six different orders they can give. It's fire, advance, run, ambush, rally, and down. Uh, and these orders right here is what we're going to center this uh, basics, this intro to bolt action on. So let's talk about the fire order. The fire order is one of the more basic orders. The unit given this order can fire. So they do not move and they open up uh, their weapons on chosen targets at full effect. Uh, some weapons have to be used with given the fire order and can't be used with the advance order. So for this example, if this Gebersjäger squad was given the fire order, they would not be able to move, but they would be able to shoot at one of the two eligible units uh, in their line of sight. If they were given the advance order, the advance order would be put down, and then that unit would be allowed to move up to six inches and shoot with a minus one penalty. If that German infantry squad is given a run order, they're gonna move at two times their speed value. So for infantry, that's gonna be six inches. This can also be used to initiate close combat. Uh, for example, if this unit was gonna to try to run into close combat with that MMG team, they could do so on a run order because they would make contact with that unit before it's in terrain. However, if they were placed back and the path to attack, the assault path would take them into terrain, they would not be able to get there and they would have to get an advance order, which would only be six inches, which would not be enough. And we'll go more into combat uh, later in this episode. Uh, but if you look at your terrain table in your rule book, you have the infantry category. You can't run into rough ground and you can't run over an obstacle. Otherwise, you have uh, full movement for any type of terrain. Uh, so in order to engage in close combat, they would need to do an advance order to get them six inches to engage in close combat because of that rough terrain being the trees in between them and the MMG squad. The next order we're going to talk about is uh, ambush order. So when a unit is put on ambush, they do not move or fire. However, they're gonna wait for an opportunity to do something. Right, so what that means is ambush order goes down and they're gonna wait for a target to present themselves. So what they can do is they can interrupt a movement of another enemy unit. So let's just say that French forces of the interior squad was going to move six inches. The Germans can then use their ambush order. They would declare they're interrupting the movement and go on fire, and then they would fire as normal. 
At the end of the turn, if you're still in an ambush order, normally you would take all the order dice out and put them back in the bag. However, you don't have to do that. You can choose to leave that unit on ambush, or you can roll the dice, and then on a four up, you can activate the unit. So in this instance, they would be able to activate, and they can choose a target at the end of the turn, fire, and since that goes from an ambush to a fire, that order dice will be taken and put back into the bag. And that's done at the end of the turn after the, all the order dice are gone. Uh, one thing to note here is that unit of ambush can also go down. Uh, so if this MM, if the next order dice that's pulled and the MMG is going to fire upon them, they can choose, since they're on ambush, to go down. The next order you can do is a rally order. Uh, so rally is used Usually I like to use it when I'm sitting at three pins and I don't want to take an orders test, which would be two dice minus the three pins. Uh, Cause then you're looking at about, even if you're a veteran troops, a little bit better than 50% odds of passing that. So you take an orders test. So you take an unmodified leadership test. So you roll two D six, trying to roll under your leadership. If you pass that, you can do your rally order. Uh, so you cannot move or fire, but you roll a D six and you lose D6 plus one pin. So in this instance, they would lose three pins. So those three pins would go away. They would have the rally order and they'd be full combat effective next turn. And the last order is the down order. The down order can be given at any time. So if in this scenario, the German squad chooses the fire onto the French forces of the interior, the French forces interior can respond by going down. There can be no move or fire when you go down, but you can be an extra minus two to hit. So in some instances, if you're wide in the open, this can save your skin, or it can make you near impossible if you're behind hard terrain or hard cover. Now that we discussed the basic borders, let's talk about pins. So in this scenario, let's say the Germans took three pins on their squad. They have not issued an order yet, and they want to issue a fire order. So the dice gets pulled. They put the order dice by their unit. Now they're going to have to take an order test. And being regular troops, the morale is a nine. With three pins, that makes the morale of six. So if they have to take a test, they rolled an eight. So they would fail. And this would be a down order. The unit would go down, not remove any of their pins, and do nothing for that turn. Uh, so in this instance, this is when you'd use the rally order because you would do an unmodified leadership of your nine, which they pass, and then lose D6 plus one pins. So they lose three pins. They lose all three of their pins and they'd be good to go next turn instead of doing nothing and also having three pins for the turn. Now it's important to note for the down order, if your unit is down, just like an ambush, you can leave it at the end of the turn. If you leave it at the end of the turn, you're gonna lose D3 pins. So in this instance, they would have lost the three pins, but the next turn that unit's gonna be down. This can be very useful if you have a unit that get, keeps getting beat up, takes pins, maybe not taking casualties. Uh, keep them on the board, keep them from getting pinned out, and also, keep getting that advantage uh, for being shot at because you're doing a minus two to hit. All right, so everybody's favorite rule, the FUBAR rule. So you take your orders test, you roll double sixes, and you roll on the FUBAR chart. You're gonna roll another D6. On a one or a two, you're gonna do friendly fire. So this order will go to fire, and then your opposing player is gonna choose one of your units to get fired at as a friendly target. So the friendly target that they're choosing must have an enemy target within 12 inches. So in this scenario, let's say the Waffen SS were up. And they were advancing. What would happen is this Gebersager squad, since they foobarred, and they were trying to shoot at the French forces of the interior, they would do friendly fire into their own squad and your enemy, your opponent, would have the, the option of choosing that squad if you had multiple targets. If when you do your FUBAR roll, you roll a three, four, five, or six, your unit's gonna execute a run order. 
and you're going to move as fast away, as fast as far as possible away from the closest visible enemy unit. Uh, so for here, the closest visible enemy unit would be them. So their line of retreat would be taking them that way, and they would get the run order. So they would go 12 inches. And if there's no enemy visible, they would just go down. Uh, and it's possible that this could take them off the board, and if they reach the board edge, they're removed from the game. We're doomed, routed units. All right, so if these Geberzeger, whose leadership is nine, have nine or more pin markers on them, they are going to rout. This means that they're gonna be immediately destroyed and removed from the game. Uh, normally you won't see this happen a lot, uh, but you might. Uh, just something to keep in mind as you keep taking pins. Uh, so for inexper inexperienced troops, it'll be eight. Regulars will be taken out with nine and veterans will be 10. And the key thing to remember here, I know I get this wrong sometime, it's that amount or more. So if your morale is a nine, it's nine or more. Equal to or more pins in your morale, you're routed or removed from the game. And then the last thing we're gonna talk about with pins is the effect on shooting. All right, so shooting procedures, you declare a target, the target reacts, measure the range and fire, roll the hit, roll the damage, take casualties and check morale. All right, so in bolt action, you hit on a three up and then you add modifiers. So for every pin, it's gonna be minus one to hit. So in this instance, just to start with, this Geberzeger squad, if they were gonna shoot the downed French forces of the interior, they would take a minus three for the pins and then an additional minus two for the down. Uh, so that would be a minus five. So they would need sixes followed by sixes in order to roll a seven or a higher. Uh, so in this instance, the best thing for them to do, honestly, is to get that rally order, rally those pins off so they can do something next turn or perhaps go down themselves, uh, depending on the scenario you're in. All right, so now that we've gone over the basics of the order, Let's just do a sample game round uh, just to wrap things up. So I have four order dice, two gray for the Germans, and two green for the Allies, for the French. So what we're going to do is put them in a bag, shuffle the bag, and choose one. So the first one we're going to pull is a gray order dice. So what we're going to do, not wanting to really commit, and we're going to try to figure out what's going on, we're going to put the SS on the ambush. So they're on ambush, and that's going to give them a chance to react to anything that happens further on in this turn. So that ends their order. We're going to shake up the dice bag, and we're going to choose another dice. So we get a green dice, and the Allied forces are going to activate. Now, so what's going to happen here is the French forces of the interior are going to try to close the distance between them and the Waffen SS. So they're given an advance order. This means they're gonna move six inches. And then they're gonna be allowed to fire. However, since the Germans have a unit that's on ambush, they're gonna expend their ambush order to go on fire. And this is gonna give them a chance to fire at the Germans. I'm sorry, they're, this is gonna give the Germans a chance to fire at the French uh, before the French can finish uh, their advance. So for simplicity's sake, we'll just say all those Germans have rifles. So there's five men and there's five dice for five rifles. In bolt action, like we talked about before, a three up is the basic to hit. They're in the open. There's no small man. And they're not within point blank range. They're just out of six inches apart, so it's not point blank range, so no plus one. So there's gonna be needing threes to hit. All right, so because they got at least one hit, that is going to put a pin marker on the French forces over there. So that's an important thing to remember. All you need to do is get a hit. You don't need to get a kill to put in a pin on the enemy. This is just 
Sometimes the best thing you can do is just keep putting pins onto a squad to keep in combat ineffective. Uh, so just like shooting is very streamlined, uh, eliminating an enemy unit is very streamlined too. So these are uh, regular infantry units and they're going to be killed on a four up. So I rolled a one, a two, and a one. So nobody is killed. So the fire happened, they put a pin on them, but nobody died because they needed a four up to kill. Uh, if they were veterans, they needed a five up, and if they were inexperienced, they would need a three up. So now that the ambush order has been used, the French can use uh, the rest of their advance order. Right, for simplicity's sake, we're gonna say that there's seven rifles in that seven man squad. They have one pin, so they can be minus one to hit, and they moved, incurring another minus one penalty. Uh, so even though they didn't kill anybody, the Germans made the French uh, less combat effective for their attack. So they would initially need threes, but now they're looking for fives to hit. All right, so they got three hits. Well, I'm sorry, they got two hits, which is enough to put a pin marker onto the Germans. And now they're gonna roll for damage. These Germans are veterans, so they're going to be killed on a 5-up. They do not die, but they take the pin. All right, that order dice has been completely resolved, so we go back to the bag, and we're going to pull another dice from the bag. And we get a green one. So this MMG team is going to give a fire order. They're going to declare their target, and their target is going to be the Gersbergjäger that are right there in the open with two pins and I'm about to get opened up on an MMG. The German player is gonna elect to pull an order from his dice bag to make them go down. So because the German pulled his order, that's all they're gonna do for this turn is take the down order, but the MMG team is gonna be minus two to hit him. So with five dice, instead of needing threes, they're gonna need fives. And they get one. And these are regular, so on a 4-up, they're going to kill. And they rolled a 1, does not get a 4-up. However, since they hit, the Gebersiger already had 2 pins, so they'll go up 1 pin to 3. Alright, and that's it. That's the end of this little game turn. So what's going to happen is you're going to scoop up your order dices, and any ambush or down orders can elect to stay on. So what we're going to do here is we're going to actually keep the down order on the Gebersiger, and they're going to roll a dice and it rolled off camera, but they rolled a six. So they're gonna take D3 pins off of them. So all three pins here are gonna be washed away. They're still gonna be down, so they're still gonna get the effect of the down order, um, but they're no longer pinned. So we're gonna pick up the dice and do round two of this demonstration game. So now that we're in round two, all the dice are picked up, except the Germans who were already down. They elected to stay down. They rolled a six. So on a D3, that means three pins come off. And we're going to pull one dice out of the order bag. All right, we get a German order dice. The Germans are going to get a run order because they want to go in close combat. They want those Waffen SS to get in close combat with the French forces of the interior. Uh, so they're going to have to take an order test, though, because they have one pin on them. So their leadership is a nine. I'm sorry, the leadership is a 10 normally, minus one for the pin, so a nine. And an 11, they don't do anything. So they're gonna go down. That pin is gonna stay there because they did not successfully pass an order. If they were to successfully pass the order, one pin would melt away, but that doesn't happen. And now we know what's gonna happen because all there is left is allied dice because both German dice are out. This MMG team is gonna get an ambush order. I know, it doesn't really make tactical sense, but I kinda of wanna show how the ambush order works. And then we're gonna pull another dice. And the last dice to pull is the French forces of the interior. So they're gonna get a shoot order. They're gonna get the fire order. Uh, so, if you don't really know how the units work in bolt action, the SS are fanatics, so they're harder to kill in close combat and being veterans, so the French player has decided his best option is to sit there and shoot them. So he's gonna try to pass an order's test because he do, does have one pin. 
and he does with an 8. Leadership is a 9, minus 1 is an 8. So because they passed, they're going to lose one of their pin tokens. And now with their 7 rifles, they're going to shoot at the Germans. Germans are no modifiers. They're outside of six inches, just outside of six inches, so not point blank range. And uh, there's no pins on them anymore, and they didn't move. So just looking for threes. Not that good, but they do get three hits. And that's going to put another pin under the Germans. And a five or higher. They're going to kill. All right, and they do. So one German is removed from play. All right, now the turn is ended. The down units can choose to go down, continue to stay down, or they can have their dice picked up. The ambush unit, so this is the ambush unit, this MMG team. He can choose to stay on ambush, or he can try to shoot. On a four up, he would be eligible to shoot. He's going to stay on ambush. He's in a good spot. The Germans have to come to him, and he can react to anything that the German player is going to do. Uh, so we'll do one more quick round here. We'll go to turn three, pick up the dice, and see what happens. The Germans chose not to keep the down order on the uh, Waffen SS because they're leadership 10, leadership 8, still a little bit more than 50%. They're going to try to roll hot with the dice to pass an orders test. So... We pull the dice from the bag, and we're going to get a green dice. And with that, the French forces in the interior are going to do one more volley, one more round, shooting in to the Waffen SS. So again, they're looking for threes. And they got three hits. So that's going to put another pin. It could get to the point where this becomes a small team when it's one to two men, and that's going to be an additional minus one to hit. But once we get there, they're going to be kind of in combat ineffective. So five's the kill because they're veterans. No kills, but it's going to be harder for them to pass their test. All right, the next dice, we're going to give a run order. If I can find it here, here we go. We're going to give a run order to those Germans right there. So the Gewurzeger are going to try to help their buddies out, and they're going to try to run into close combat with the Germans. Uh, so, I'm sorry, with the French. So the French, if they didn't have an order dice on them, they can choose to try to fire as long as they're outside of six inches to react to that close combat. However, they don't have that, so that's why the German player is going to try to move. So he can move 12 inches, so he has more than enough. However, we have this MMG team on ambush. This MMG team is going to flip over to fire, and he's going to take five shots. So he's taking five shots, no modifiers, so hitting on threes. And that's going to be two hits. And fours up are going to kill. All right, no kills, but they're going to take a pin. So those Germans get into close combat, and we'll come right back. So when bolt action, close combat combat is really brutal. So there's no way to hit roll. You just roll your damage roll. And there's no terrain that the French forces of the interior are in. So what they're going to do is the Germans, one, two, three, four, five, six Germans. And they're going to try to roll a four up. And each successful four up is going to kill a guy. So they're going to get two kills. We'll put them over here. So because the French took two casualties, they're going to lose two models. So they're going to roll five dice now. And they're going to kill on a four up. And they actually kill three. So in this scenario, the French inflicted three kills while the Germans inflicted two kills. The French, even though they were charged, have won the combat. 
So the side that has caused the most casualties in this round of close combat is the winner. The losing unit is destroyed and removed from the game. So even though they outnumber the French, they were destroyed in close combat. And those good Berserker are removed. So now since the French forces of the interior have won, they're going to make a regroup move. So they're going to move two inches to kind of regroup and reform their lines. Uh, we're going to leave them where they are because it's not really going to affect uh, the what's going to happen with the uh, one unit that's yet to activate. So the last unit will activate. We'll try again. We'll try to do a run order with the crack troops, with the SS. So they're at three now. Three pins, so it's going to be a seven, a leadership test of a seven, and they get it with a five. So they're going to initiate close combat with the French forces of the interior. Nobody's on ambush, and that unit already has an order dice, so there's no reactions that they can do. So we're going to go right in the combat. Off an SS, they're going to attack first. They have four guys, but they're tough fighters. Uh, they have the tough fighter special rule, uh, submachine guns that give you tough fighter special rule, and what that happens is. You roll your dice to do damage, and any ones that go through, you're going to roll additional dice. Uh, so we'll demonstrate here. So they're going to need fours to kill. So they got two hits. I'm sorry, two damage, right? And because they're tough fighters, they're going to roll another two dice. Now, it doesn't explode again, but they got three hits. And the Germans are, or the French are not going simultaneously. The, French, the Germans are going first because the French are caught in the open and the Germans charge. So three models will get removed, and then the French will make their attacks. All right, so the French are going to attack with two miniatures, needing fives to kill. And they actually do. They actually get two kills. However, the French have only inflicted two casualties, while the Germans inflicted three. So the French lose the combat, and they're routed. The Germans get a special reconsolidation move of D6, which rolled way off camera, so we'll do it again, which is a five. So they'll get a five inch move. And they'll try to get a little bit closer here to that MMG. So next turn, if they wanna to try to assault it, they can. And they're within six inches, so there'll be no reaction for that MMG. All right, and that's it. So we'll start the demonstration there. I hope this was helpful. Uh, try to keep the chaos down. Try to do it as canned as possible so you can see the different interactions, how to use ambush, how to keep the ambush order uh, to either use it on a four up at the end of the turn or keep it to cover yourself, and how uh, maybe a little bit of the intricacies of close combat in there as well and shooting and pins. Uh, so please, if you like it, or if you have uh, some improvements, please include it in the comments. Like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Thank you.